Okay, I'm pleased to be here and uh, talk to the uh, IGL students and whoever else uh, watches the website. Um, I'm Noam Lior, I'm a professor of mechanical engineering here at Penn. And most of my work for the last uh, couple of decades is about energy and about uh, sust the sustainable development. So more and more into the sustainable development end. And uh, part of what I do, other than teach courses on the subject, is that um, I'm involved in <clears throat> international conferences which um, uh, deal with sustainable development. Uh, and uh, each year or, or, or two we have some big conference. And, uh, I'll tell you about two of them. <clears throat> One is, uh, in both of them, I'm the chairman of the International Scientific Committee of the conference, so I'm very involved in the organization. Uh, <clears throat> One of them is uh, a sort of a veteran conference that's called ECOS, and ECOS stands for something like energy cost optimization, environment, and so on. So it's sort of an energy sustainability conference that started in 1987 in Rome and uh, we had the 24th uh, in the series uh, it, in uh, the city, the beautiful city of Novi Sad in Serbia uh, this year, it was in July. And uh, <clears throat> these uh, conferences uh, move from country to country, like last year we were in Switzerland, before that we were in Brazil, uh, next year is in Italy and the year after in China. So. Uh, each host uh, uh, country takes takes some uh, uh, one particular conference. So this uh, <coughs> this one was probably the most popular in terms of uh, attendance. We had roughly 400 attendees, uh, which for this conference this is a good number. And um, uh, we dealt with just about every uh, topic uh, associated with uh, sustainable development of energy and renewable and uh, coal and nuclear and uh, and so on and uh, so that's the one conference and the other one is um, a conference series that started in 2002 which is we call it the um, SDEWES Sustainable Development of Energy, Water and Environment Systems and it started modestly as a just as a conference but after great success a couple of years ago we formed a uh, we founded a center for the same for the sustainable development uh, it's at least temporarily uh, seated in uh, Zagreb in Croatia because the organizers of the conference are from there but it's an international center with statutes and uh, it's all um, uh, well well organized and that one was just now, I just came back, uh, it was the end of September to the beginning of October. And IGEL actually is a partner to these conferences officially, so IGEL is on the, uh, on the uh, website, as you may know. And uh, it was also very successful, we had uh, even more people, and uh, we had people from 53 countries, and the other one we had 47 countries. And uh, there is an enormous interest from um, uh, people in sustainable development. They come from as far as Australia and Japan and Brazil and uh, I mean South America and uh, uh, a lot from Europe. And there was a lot of emphasis in both conferences, in fact, because both of them are in what's, for, what's now former Yugoslavia. Uh, in both conferences, there was great interest in regional cooperation for sustainable development which brings up those uh, people who sort of split apart in the last 10 or 20 years, uh, brings them together because as I, in my introductory comments, say that uh, sustainability does no borders. You know, uh, you cannot draw a border and say, you know, you, you develop sustainably without cooperating with the people in the other countries. So uh, uh, that's uh, the brief, uh, overview of uh, what these conferences are. What do you think the most important things to come out of the conference conferences would be? Very good. The, um, uh, each conference has a declaration at the end. 
uh, the uh, conference uh, ECOS is not so uh, accustomed to declarations, so it had a very short one, which reads something like uh, uh, sustainable development is of vital importance to humanity and it cannot succeed without international and regional cooperation. So it was very compact and it goes around. Uh, the other one, the uh, Dubrovnik conference, uh, has uh, had last time a pretty hefty declaration about the need to uh, reduce uh, carbon emissions uh, and it was prepared for the Copenhagen meeting about uh, uh, climate control and we distributed it there and we sent it all around and uh, one of the things besides the normal sort of admonitions to uh, or reduce carbon was to put the politicians uh, uh, on the spot, uh, saying that uh, you better help with that or the voters will know that you are not participating and there may be consequences. And So our previous declaration was one of the strongest, I was told, that by, by any sort of renewable, sustainable energy organization. And this time it had um, uh, it, it has been written, it's being still uh, uh, sort of finessed a bit, but mostly it has to do with the relationship between sustainable development and employment. So the whole world is facing terrible unemployment uh, uh, situation. And, I mean, we are complaining about it here, but ours is uh, small relative to other countries. Ours is around 9%, and they have, many countries are facing 20 plus percent unemployment, which is so the disasters. And we wanted to uh, show the connection between sustainable development and, uh, and, uh, and, and employment. So these are the declarations that come out of this. So, and the other thing is, again, I, I give sort of an introductory uh, welcome and I say the conferences are there to exchange information, you know, bring up your new research, and, you know, talk, listen to others but also for networking amongst sustainability people. So we had lots of young people, you know, come in. And we, <clears throat> we also got, for the first one, we got a UNESCO grant to support some young scientists to come to the conference. And uh, so lots of young people come and they're very keen, well, just like I think both of you are very keen on sustainable development. And they want to learn, they want to meet experts, they want to look for employment and so on. And um, could you talk about some of your current research in this area? Yeah, I have, I have a pretty broad uh, um, span of research and that comes with age, I guess you accumulate. I, I, it's hard for me to drop topics. So I can, uh, I'm uh, working in uh, some solar uh, power generation uh, concepts. I'm working on more efficient <clears throat> power generation systems that are not solar but that capture carbon dioxide. Uh, I work on some uh, side aspects of um, say something that you would call ethics of uh, sustainable development. I wrote recently a very invited paper about the dangers of um, fraud in the whole sustainability field actually uh, uh, well, it, it's um, to do with the fact that the, the word sustainable is very appealing and everybody says uh, that things are sustainable and, and they're not and then it causes a lot, a lot, lot of uh, disappointment by uh, people and, and they feel that sustainability is just a gimmick, that it's not real. So, uh, so that's one area. The other area that I just wrote another invited paper about is so the political side of uh, sustainable development, uh, sustainable development is a long-term wide space uh, effort and uh, we elect our politicians for very short terms and therefore that limits their interest, you know, in, in producing something because in two years or four years or five years they're gone, you know. So we're looking at uh, proposing sort of very humbly because I'm not really into political science, but some some changes that would assure sort of uh, continuity and longevity uh, uh, in, in 
national uh, planning of uh, sustainable development. So you can see there's a whole variety of things, anything from sort of hardcore technology to... I'm also very interested in sustainability metrics, you know, how to measure sustainability, so I'm doing some work on that. And what do you think the most important thing is for the sustainability field going forward to succeed? Uh, to put you on the spot. <laughs> yeah, no, but uh, you know, that's, a, that's a very appropriate to, to ask. Uh, uh, there has to be more education, you know, so people understand what sustainability is and how, how important it is, how vital it is for our survival, you know, and it's not just carbon. Global warming—it's everything. We have horrible uh, water problems, you know, that are as severe or more, even more severe than energy problems. There is a, but uh, one in seven people is undernourished. You know, we have problems with food, with uh, we have problems with social equity, you know, and so on. So we have to make people understand that this is, although it's a long, longer term issue, that it must be dealt with uh, as quickly as possible. So education is one, one thing. The other one is metrics. How do you measure sustainability? When you say something is sustainable, how do you, what kind of number do you associate with it? And the numbers are sort of aggregates of uh, social, environmental and economic issues, and they're not easy to aggregate, you know, even social issues. Uh, and those. Are difficult. So this is, and then there must be a realization by governments also that although it goes beyond their term in office, it is very important to have that continuity and that, that commitment for the for the long term. So I think this is some of the main issues, and this is all a little fuzzy, and it happens suddenly when there is some disaster, okay, like the nuclear disaster in uh, Fukushima or if there's some immediate impact of global warming or so, then people get scared and they start becoming sustainable. But uh, hopefully we can do things without disasters, you know, uh, and move on.